welcome to Shy Cat Live. We're here at Can TV and the Live Hotline Studio. Uh, Shy Cat stands for Chicago Center for Arts and Technology. We're a relatively new nonprofit. We provide adult education and youth arts programs uh, for free, free to anyone who can make it to our center. Uh, I am BJ Allen. I am a digital arts instructor here at ShyCat. I am the host for today. Uh, today we'll be talking about youth arts programs, but we also have a special guest who is uh, Mark Frank. He is from the national organizations uh, organization that Shy Cat comes from. And then we also have uh, Matt Wilson. He is a, the instructor for the 3D Maker Lab. So before we get into talking about our wonderful free youth arts programs that are registering now, we are going to hear from Mark. Um, yeah, let's start with that and I'll give a little lowdown on the on the rest of, of Shy Cat in a minute. But let's hear from Mark about the history of Shy Cat, which is in the, all the cats, which is pretty amazing. Uh, my name is Mark Frank. Uh, I'm the founder of the only cat outside the United States, which is in Israel, which trains Arabs and Jews together. And the story starts with Bill's history and ends uh, in Chicago with Chai Cat. Uh, Bill Strickland was a sophomore in the uh, 60s in a failing Pittsburgh Public High School. He was a failing student. He was wandering the halls. Some of his friends were already dead. Uh, many of them were in prison and he just cut class all the time and one day as he was cutting class, he heard the sound of jazz music and smelled coffee. He stuck his head in the door and noticed that the room was very well sunlit and saw a man on a what turned out to be a potter's wheel, which Bill had never seen. And being a very curious person, he said, what's that? And the teacher, rather than tell him, you're not supposed to be in here, you're cutting classes, took the time to bring Bill in, explain that it was a potter's wheel, explain what it was for, and literally put his hands on Bill's hands to help make a pot. And by the time Bill was a senior, he had gotten to be a pretty good ceramicist. And the teacher said to him, I'm not going to let you die here because he knew what was happening to Bill's friends. He took him down to the University of Pittsburgh, which is where uh, Manchester Bidwell is, which is the program that Chai Cat replicates. And said, please take this guy in to the admissions office. Well, they said, what did you get on your SATs? Bill had never heard of SATs because none of his friends had ever taken the course because nobody was aimed at college. So they gave him the SATs. He did very poorly on them. And he said, sort of, I don't have to go to college now. But they take, took him in, in uh, on probation. And while he was in college, he decided that this program, this this environment that he learned about with light and mentoring and jazz music and beauty everywhere in the art room had this transformative effect on him and basically saved his life. And if it would work for him, a poor struggling African-American uh, kid uh, in the north side of Pittsburgh, which was the murder capital of Pittsburgh at the time, that it would work with other people his age. So he got a little money from a church. His father was a carpenter. They went out and bought a stereo system, a pot of coffee, uh, played jazz music and got a couple of potter's wheels and after a while it was hard to get kids to come in after school but after a while I started getting students to come in and really enjoy making pots and after a year or two a car pulls up with a number of uh, white adults and he's thinking uh oh what did I do wrong <laughs> and they get out of the car and they come in and they say we're teachers from your old school and each one of us has a student who has changed his behavior it was all boys, it changed his behavior. He's coming to class regularly, coming on time, not being disruptive, and ultimately matriculated to the next grade. And we're scratching our heads and we can't figure out what's going on. And the only thing we can see in common with them is they all come to your class after school. So uh, fast forward a few years, Martin Luther King is assassinated, the riots take place, the federal government starts throwing money at problems and builds a job, adult job training program called the Bidwell Training Center, and it, tr it trained people in the building trades, carpentry, masonry, electrical wiring, and Pittsburgh was a shrinking city at the time, so these people were being trained for jobs that just didn't exist. And 
Bill had a little model of a building that had been contributed that was ultimately by the architect who had built a, pro a prototype of what would become the Pittsburgh International Airport. And he would put it under his arm every once in a while, and he would take it to try and raise money. And I was working as a lawyer for the students at the program at the time, and I actually felt okay. sorry for him because I knew he was never going to build it. Well, <laughs> he raised the money, he built it, and in the process of building it, he got a call from a senator by the name of John Hines, whose family was the Hines uh, ketchup people. And John Hines was a United States senator from Pennsylvania, lived in Pittsburgh, and said to Bill, you know, Hines is trying to start an affirmative action program, and we're trying to find people to do some of the, the mixing the spices and measuring spices, and we're really having a hard time. I know you're building this beautiful building on the north side. Would you consider starting a program that would train people how to do this? To which Bill responded, well, Senator Hines, that's very flattering, and um, I'd love to help you, but we're a building trades training operation. We don't we don't do that. The building's already designed for carpentry and masonry, et cetera. And I'm very hesitant to get into something I don't know, so I don't think we're ready to get into the food preparation training business. To which Mr. H Senator Hines responded, well, what if I were to write you a check for a million dollars? To which Bill responded, well, Senator, it looks like we're in the food preparation training business, <laughs> which was the first time that Bill realized that to, in order to have a good job training program, a successful job training program, a vibrant job training program, you had to have a three-legged stool. You couldn't just have the trainer and you couldn't just have the money, you also had to have the employer there. So Heinz acted as the employer and the funder and Manchester Bidwell, Bidwell Training Center, that's Bill there, um, acted as the trainer. And from that point on, every job training program they do has a council of employers that help develop the program, keep the program up to date, and agree to hire employees. Um, Bill is a very passionate and uh, artful speaker and he's on a speaking tour and periodically people come up to him and tell him how impressed they are and uh, I've actually been in places where people came up and said can I just touch him I just because he's he's that kind of he's that dynamic and along the way he won the, Man the, the MacArthur Genius Award and all kinds of other awards and and, and been invited to the White House and gotten White House awards. And for anyone who's coming in right now, I just want to let you know that we're talking about our founder of Shy Cat, or of the model, which is Bill Strickland. And Mark Frank here has been here along through that whole process. Sorry to interrupt, but I want you to give you your, your due here. We're very excited to have Mark here today to tell this story. So please continue. So uh, Bill is out of San Francisco giving one of his lectures. And a guy comes out of the audience and says, uh, that's very impressive, the, the, the spirit is very obvious, and I think this is a business model. My name is Jeff Skoll, I'm one of the founders of eBay, and I'd like to discuss maybe replicating this in other cities. I don't think it just takes your dynamic personality to work, I think it's a business model in and of itself. Bill had never heard of Jeff Skoll and had never heard of eBay, so he puts the card in his pocket and he goes back, thank you very much, he goes back to Pittsburgh, he shows the card to someone and said, holy cow, that's, that's eBay. Um, so Bill picks up the card and calls Mr. Skoll on his private number. He says, Mr. Skoll, I have a new appreciation for what it is you do for a living. Let's talk. And Jeff Skoll funded a feasibility study to see whether or not another smaller version of Manchester Bidwell would work. They started in San Francisco. And from that point on, cities start to come to Pittsburgh to see whether or not they can also start a program. Bill has done a TED Talk that's very inspiring. I encourage people to see it. It's very moving. And what we have found is that environment shapes behavior. If you put people in a beautiful environment, which is what Chi Cat is all about, which is what Manchester Bidwell is all about, you get beautiful people. If you put people in a space that looks like a prison, and that's what the entrance to Manchester Bidwell looks like. Um, one of the things that they learned is that when you put people in that environment and you mentor them and give them hope that the differences between people become less important than their aspirations and their aspirations become common and in Bill's experience and in all of the cats there's never been a racial incident there's no bars on the windows there's no um, alarms there's no uh, uh, metal detectors 
where down the street from him, they have all of that at the high school and they still have violence. And as I'm listening to this, that it's scalable and that it is, it brings people together, it occurred to me that the acid test for this model would be to take it to Israel specifically to train Arab adults and Jewish adults and Arab youth and, and Jewish youth in the arts. And I'm here to say that after being open for two and a half years, it's working. People are becoming um, inured to each other and in many cases becoming friends after having no contact with the other Jews, not having contact with Arabs and Arabs not having contact with Jews, come out having a new appreciation of the other and the other becomes one of us. So that's the short history of the Manchester Bidwell model that led to ACAT, the ACO Center for Arts and Technology in ACO Israel, and now CHICAT, the Chicago Center for Arts and Technology. And here we're looking at a map of all the CATs um, internationally now. There's the, the one little red dot over where Israel is, right. and that's what Mark was just talking about. And I'd just like to um, reiterate what he was saying, that in this very conflict-torn region, we have opened up another CAT, and that's running very successfully with a very, very diverse group of people there. And that is what we're, we're doing here in Chicago. That's what they're doing in all the other CATs. Um, we have very diverse populations that come use our services. And, and using services is not really the way, right way to put it. Um, I would say we are, it's a, a community of people that are working together to create art and, and enjoy technology and be trained and... and um, it's really, I think of it as a, a place where people in the community can come to propel themselves forward on whatever path they're on. So if they're from XYZ school with XYZ kind of creativity, or maybe they've been to some graphic design camp before or something like that, we meet people where they're at and we propel them forward. It's all about giving people the momentum, the leverage, the technology, the space the safety in the family that they may or may not have had before. Just taking that, meeting them where they're at, and pushing them forward. I, yeah, I, I agree completely. And, and um, you know, it's a, special, it's a special environment to be part of um, where we teach youth arts. Like, uh, you know, Matt and I are about to talk about our, the classes that we have coming up. But there's a whole, there's a whole history and dynamic behind it that has been very successful and very rewarding for um, many people all over the country and now all over the world. So when we're talking about our classes and other you know things that come up and events we have, we just had a wonderful Black History Month event on Friday and, and invited a lot of families and and community members. And it's a it's a it's a place where people can be in a beautiful uh, environment where people care about them where they're not underestimated, but they're pushed to, to really succeed in the ways that they want to succeed. And I, um, I can't really say more about it than that. Um, so thank you, Mark, for your, your perspective on, on this really important history to Shy Cat. Yes, very, important, very enlightening. Yeah, it's great to have it. He's visiting us, and you know he's in Israel um, a lot of time, and we're a lot of his time, so we're very grateful to have him here at Shy Cat. Um, kind of giving giving us perspective on uh, the good work that we're doing. It's a pleasure to be here, and it's a it's a labor of love. And uh, I've been at it now for 45 years with Bill. My first job out of law school was I was hired by Bill, and interestingly enough, it was not to represent the institution, but to represent the students because these were people down on their luck and often got into trouble. So it's now in my DNA. And we are we are located um, here. Let me let me give you give you guys a little background about Shy Cat um, here in Chicago. So here is our location. We are on 1701 West 13th Street. We're really close to Roosevelt and Ashland. Uh, we have buses that come nearby, Pink Line. And if you want to find out any more information about us at any time go to www.chicat.org, and there's our phone number down there, 312-733-1701.
Uh, oh, here's Rebecca. Excuse me, that was Bill Strickland. Hi, Bill. Uh, now, this is our mission. So, kind of coming off of what Mark was to saying, at Chi Cat, we elevate our talents, culture, and community through transformative art studios, sector driven training, and advanced technology. And again, we have two kind of tracks at, uh, at Chi Cat one are for adults and one for, uh, for youth. We serve middle schoolers and high schoolers in our youth arts programs. So if any of you teachers or parents or students are listening right now, you know, get ready to write some stuff down because we've got some wonderful opportunities coming up. Uh, we also have adult education programs and every other week here at CanTV, uh, we, our adult programs also come in and talk about what they're up to. I know they're also enrolling right now. Um, so uh, if you are an adult and you're interested in career training in a technology field um, for free. All of our programs are for free. I know the programs that uh, the adult programs are under one year, all of them. Uh, they're a good way to propel yourself into, um, into a more comfortable living situation. Um, all right, so let's talk about our youth arts programs here. So, we are enrolling right now. We have three studios for, for students 6th grade through 12th grade. We have after school programs, which is what we're going to talk about mostly now. These after school programs are currently in session. Um, we are registering students now. Uh, we're very, uh, you know, very welcoming to new students who are, are coming into our programs. Uh, so again, keep that pencil out and write down if uh, if anything appeals to you and we can talk. So here we go. Um, here are the classes that we have right now. Um, the middle schoolers meet Monday and Wednesday from 4.30 to 6.30. High school classes are Tuesday and Thursday from 5 to 7. Uh, I'm not going to read all the classes right now, but mm -hmm. note that we Open well, studio. We have open studio on Fridays, and that's a time for students to to come into Shy Cat and work on whatever they want in any studio. So, say you're enrolled in a digital arts class, uh, my studio, in a class in one of my <laughs> studios. You can go over to Matt's studio next door in the Maker Lab, and on Fridays make a 3D print or work with the Oculus Go, which we're going to tell you about in a sec. Um, so note that our studios are fluid. It's not just a, a place where you come and you learn a thing in your class and then you're done. Um, we, we have a youth lounge for students to come after school so they don't, they're not waiting out in the middle of nowhere before our after school start, programs start. Um, we have snacks, we play chess, we watch movies, we hang out. Homework help. Homework help, that's a very important thing that we've started this term too. So, um, so students don't come um, to our after school program and then oh I gotta you know go home and complete all this homework. You should be able to get it all done by the time hopefully by the um, by the time you leave. So uh, let's talk a little bit about our specific classes that we have coming up. Now Patty uh, Valcana she uh, teaches in the design studio which is more uh, analog studio that has things like sewing and um, clay and uh, do they have clay? Maybe they don't have clay. Okay. Silk screening, painting, um, and what she's offering this quarter or this term are uh, comic creation and manga mania. That class, I believe, is full for the middle schoolers. Yep, I'm, I'm seeing a nod of yes. And the but the fashion and textile design for high schoolers. That class still is taking students. So learning how to drape fabric, work, work with and create custom patterns, use sewing machines, everything that you need to know to be able to make, uh, to make fashion from soup to nuts if you don't have to have any experience. And here I have a few photos. Um, this was just taken last a few days ago. And notice the beautiful view we have in the skyline from the design studio. All of our studios have wonderful views and, and we, are, we are for real about having a beautiful space for students to work in. So here students are learning how to hand sew. This is just last week. Um, here's Patty showing, showing everyone how to thread the needle. And here are a couple students working on, um, working on sewing, you know, learning how to sew in the class. 
A nice little close-up here. And some of these photos were taken from uh, by students in my class, the Digital, uh, digital Stud Art Studio. Okay, so we're going to talk about Matt's classes in a second, but I kind of think they should, people should see our faces again for a sec instead of staring <laughs> at the <laughs> um, graphics on the computer screen. But this is Matt again, our wonderful Maker Lab instructor, totally rad. And he's got a couple courses coming up, so do you want to tell us about them? Yes, so the course I'm offering for students between 6th to 8th grade is Becoming a Maker. In becoming a maker, students will become their own 3D printing companies. They'll be asked to design logos to represent themselves. They'll 3D print that. And from that point on, rolling through the showcase at the end of the term, I will be a client for them. And each time I, the client, come to them with a job for them, it will be a project that teaches them another fundamental of using CNC machinery or 3D printing. For the high schoolers, that is making digital into reality. So you're starting off with ideas in your head. You're starting with all these creative visions and I teach them how to get it down digitally. From there, we can 3D print it or we can put it into an uh, Oculus Go virtual reality headset, which they will be able to take 3D rendered images or drawings or pictures from a 360 degree camera and be able to experience them using this headset. Which is really a great time for me to just mention again all of our studios are pushed to the max for creativity as well as technology. We make sure that students get access to things that they may not have in other places, but they also get access to supportive staff as well as creative curriculum and engaging curriculum. Wow, Great. that was that was Great. concise. <laughs> uh, thank you, Matt. Yeah, I always, whenever we pull out the Oculus Go, I always have to think. I, the first time I tried virtual reality in this Oculus Go, it was. It was a huge thrill, and I can only imagine what um, what it's like for for students, you know, to come in and experience this technology that you really only see on TV or you only hear about, or you know, oh, I want to learn about this, but I will have to take a course that costs, you know, a thousand dollars to learn about it. That's that's not the case here. Do you want to talk about any of the, your three D prints? Yeah, but just before I get into the prints, I oh, do okay. like to think about the Maker Lab as the future studio. As in all this stuff literally just came out of a sci-fi film. We have crazy technology. It's awesome. But some of these prints are a little bit more abstract in their nature. Some nice winding serpentine forms here, kind of spiraling like a cyclone or a twister. That's my favorite. But then some of them are a little bit more structural, like this orange print here, which is more to resemble cracks in concrete. But we also have this crazy drill there right there. So it's very flexible for creativity. And then we have a very recognizable Mortal Kombat logo also 3D printed here. So it's kind of open to really whatever students decide to make. My role is to make sure that they learn how to use things safely. And then from that point, as soon as the safety is done and out of the way, it's kind of up to them to just push themselves further and further. And I'll be supporting them all the way. Wonderful. Matt rocks. One of the things that I find fascinating about this work is that the art is an end in itself and the creative, the creative uh, modus is, is very important. But while the kids are having a good time on this, they're also learning high-end technology, computer-aided design and things that yes. they can use in the future. It's yes. true. You know, 3D yes. modeling is no joke. There's a lot of things you can do with that um, in a lot of different industries. Yes. So that's all true. And that's true with a lot of... Um, what a lot of the courses we offer, including, <clears throat> including the Digital Lab. Um, the Digital Lab is where I teach. We've got a couple classes. I gotta wrap this up real fast, but we got Poetry in Motion and Making the News. Both of these classes emphasize um, visual. So Poetry in Motion is making videos um, out, of, out of poetry, very creative, very experimental. And then Making the News is uh, more a photojournalism type class where you're and video journalism. So that kind of makes that long story short. Um, here's a couple of views of the digital art studio. We got tons of fun equipment. We got uh, we have updated Adobe Suite on every machine, and um, we have wonderful photography equipment. This is just from yesterday um, from the Poetry in Motion class. I told them to keep their cameras up, but that's what we have to work with. So our registration has extended. Um, please keep registering. 
Um, we want you to register church for our classes. <laughs> so give us a call at ShyCat. Um, ShyCat.org is our website. Um, give us a call. Get in touch. We would love to hear from you, and we would love to register more kids in our classes. We've got a beautiful space and instructors who are looking forward to seeing you. So thanks, everyone, for watching. And thank you, Can TV again for this opportunity to be on the Hotline Studio. And we hope to hear from you. Thanks. Bye-bye.